have you ever had an argument with a difficult colleague? I mean, you just don't understand this person. I mean, why is he acting like this? I mean, he's just so silly. I mean, how could he be doing this? And all you want to do is slap your head over and over and over again. This guy is driving you nuts. Have you ever had a colleague like that? I have. Well, okay, let's take you out of the workplace and go home. Okay, let's take you home. Have you ever had an argument with someone you loved? Someone you truly loved? And, you know, you were angry with her and she was angry back at you and you're both pissed off and, and here's the thing. You think you're right, she thinks she's right. Look, if she doesn't think she's right, you wouldn't be having this argument in the first place, right? So, you're both pissed off. You're both arguing with one another and there's no end in sight. Let me just tell you a story of a, a my girlfriend, her name's Tasha. And there was this one day where, you know, she's a fashion designer. So she designs her own clothes, she sells her own clothes online. And yeah, she runs a fashion store called Mood Fashion Store. You can look for her in Facebook, Mood Fashion Store. Some uh, very unashamed uh, promotion right there. So Mood Fashion Store. And so she, she sells her clothes online, and sometimes she sells her clothes in bazaars. And, and I still remember there was this one day when um, uh, we woke up really early. That's because she had a bazaar to go to. She had this flea market. And I was just so tired because the night before, right, I, I couldn't sleep. Because, you know, she was busy doing her stuff, her sewing machine was on, and go, 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 you know. The sewing machines do that. So how the heck do I sleep? So anyway, she was doing her business in the night, and I couldn't, didn't have enough sleep, and I only had two and a half hours sleep, and we had to wake up at seven o'clock. So, right, we both woke up seven, at seven o'clock. She was energetic as usual. Uh, well, because it's her her day. Well, I was, you know, sleepy. I was, mm. I was like this. I was like that, and I remember waking up in the morning and I was arguing with myself. Okay, okay, I, I know I want to sleep some more, I want to sleep some more, but I'm going to get up today, take my girlfriend to the flea market, and I'm going to set up her stall for her, and I'm going to do all this for her because I love her. Yeah, so that was in my head. And in my head, I thought I was such a great guy, and I'm such a great guy. And then, um, suddenly, this girl, uh, my girlfriend, walked into the door, through the room, and she looked at me and she gave me this stare. And like, you know, she wanted to eat me. And I was like, ooh, why is she angry? I mean, here I am being such a, such a great guy. And here she is wanting to kill me. And I didn't understand what was going on. And so she was angry at me, and, 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 what, and by the way, she could go by herself. I didn't have to send her, but you know what? Because I was such a great guy, I wanted to send her and set up a stall for her. I mean, I'm such a fantastic boyfriend. And she was angry with me. And so, you know, in my head, I was like, geez, this girl is just ungrateful. I mean, my God. I mean, how could she be so ungrateful? And so, you know, we, we, we took the stuff uh, into the car. Uh, I drove her there, helped her set up. And all the while, she was pissed off at me. She was angry at me. And I got angry back at her because I, in my head, I was like, why is this girl treating me like this? I mean, I'm such a great guy, right? <laughs> now, so we didn't talk for the whole day. You know, I went back home. She was at the flea market, and only when we sat down together at dinner time, and it was an uncomfortable dinner, that I finally found out why she was angry at me. And by the way, before that, I thought there was no excuse for her to be angry at me. No excuse. Jeez, I was being such a great guy. And so here she is, uh, dinner time, she was telling me, uh, you know, how she felt this that morning, and, and she was in such a rush. 
But yet all I could do was sit down in bed on the side of the bed and do this. And so she was rushing, she was packing all the stuff, we were already late and and but it was in the morning and I didn't have enough sleep and I was blur and I was sleepy. And I was like And so she was telling me, you know, how could I sit in bed uh, for that half an hour while she was rushing about everywhere? I didn't help her. And I was like thinking to myself, I'm such a great guy. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And, and she had to carry all the stuff with her. She had heavy stuff, mind you. And, and all the stuff was really heavy. And the big, big ass boxes and, 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 and those rails of clothing. And she had to carry it all by herself to the door. And she waited for me. All the while when she was doing that, making all that noise, I was going, Uh-huh, uh-huh. I'm such a great guy. I'm, I'm going to wake up and I'm going to help her. And, and so she got angry at me. Jeez, how, this guy, I mean, I don't have bazaars very often. How could my boyfriend, I mean, not know that I was rushing, not help me to carry all my stuff to the door? How could he do this to me? I mean, how could he just lay there? Going like this. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And so, what happened was, during that dinner, during that conversation, I finally understood what she was saying. I mean, why she was getting angry. Because guess what? I had my own pool of meaning. I mean, this is my pool of meaning. This is what I got out of the situation. This was her pool of meaning. It's separate, okay? My pool of meaning, her pool of meaning. Separate, nothing in common. What happened was during dinner, was when we started talking, our pool of meaning, our common pool of meaning started growing bigger. Now this is our common pool of meaning. It's the pool of meaning that we both share. It's not my pool of meaning. It's not her pool of meaning. It's a shared pool of meaning. It's a pool that we both share. And when we started talking and I started wearing her shoes, what happened was the pool of meaning that was so small like this, and that's the reason why we were arguing, became bigger and finally it grew to such a size that after dinner I finally understood why she was angry at me and when I understood why she was angry with me what happened was I I mean when I understood I forgave her and she forgave me because she finally understood that in the morning I was such a blur fella man I mean I was like, like, I, I literally didn't know what she was doing. I literally didn't know she was rushing. I literally forgot she was rushing. And so we finally forgave each other. And what happened is, during dinner, I wore her shoes. That's right. I took her shoes and I wore it. Well, not physically because, you know, I don't... Jeez, guys, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to wear this. But I literally... Well, you know, not literally... But not literally, I wore her shoes. And because I wore her shoes, and during dinner, I walked a mile with her shoes. Guys, I don't care if the shoe stinks. Wear it. Because once you wear the other person's shoes, once you gain a large pool of meaning, once you totally understand why the other person did what he or she did, you will have a good relationship with this person, no matter how many times you end up arguing or disagreeing.